All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about linear simultaneous equations. And we're going to be using a method called the method of substitution to solve them at the same time. So in real life, it so happens that you cannot really model something by a single equation. Sometimes you're going to have more than one variable involved and you're going to have more than one equation. So generally, the way that we describe things is by a bunch of things that are interacting with each other. And then we have equations that describe how those things are interacting with one another. And hence, we get simultaneous equations. So if we wanted to solve for a set of variables, say x and y, as we have here, then since we have two variables that we do not know the values of, we actually need two equations. So the general rule of thumb is um, if you have n variables, and variables are basically just unknowns, so variables are unknown values, then you need n equations in order to solve that system of equations. If that is not the case, then you cannot really solve it, or there are more than, there's more than one unique solution. But I'm not going to get into those complicated cases um, uh, in this video. We're just going to talk about systems that are actually solvable. And I'm going to show you this method of substitution first. And then after that, we're going to use the, the method of elimination. So there are many different ways of approaching these problems, but here I'm going to teach you the simplest one. So let's grab this system of equations. We have x plus y equals to 10, and then we have y equals to 4x. All right, so how do you think we can solve that? Well, one thing would be we know what y is in terms of x. So we could actually substitute this value into the first equation. So we could write something like x plus 4x is equal to 10. And then we have 5x equals to 10. And then x is going to be equal to 2. So already we found one of the variables that we wanted to solve for. And since we have the value of x now, we can just plug this value into the second equation to find the value of y. So that's going to be 4 times 2, which is equal to 8. And that's it. That's the solution to our system. We have the values of x and y. That's all we needed to do. So it's a very simple method. Now let's look at this second example here. So we have 4x minus y equals 6, and then y is going to be equal to 2x minus 4. All right, so how about we do the same thing? We're just going to grab this whole expression here. And we're going to substitute it into this. So we're going to grab the first equation. That's going to be 4x minus 2x minus 4 equals to 6. We're going to expand this one out. 4x minus 2x plus 4 equals 6. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to be 2. And here we have 4x minus 2x. That's going to be 2x. And then in the end, we get that x is going to be equal to 1. So now if we plug 1 into the second equation, we get 2 times 1 is 2, minus 4 is minus 4. And then we have 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So we have our solution, 1 and minus 2. And now for this third example, we're going to do the same thing once again. So it's a, it's a very straightforward process. We don't really need to think about it too much. Just plug this expression into here. So now we have 2 times that, so remember, 2 times this whole thing, so 2x minus 8 equals to 19. Now we're going to have 3x, expand this out, that's 2 times 2, that's 4, so that's 4x plus 2 minus 8, um, sorry, 2 times minus 8, that's minus 16, equals to 19. Now these two become 7x. And we can add 16 to both sides of this equation. So that's going to be what? That's 19 plus 6, that's 35. And then if you solve for x, that's going to give you x is 35 divided by 7. And in case you didn't know, 35 is a multiple of 7, so that's going to be 5. All right? Now to solve for y, all we do is we substitute this value into the second equation. So y is going to be equal to... 2 times 5, that's 10, minus 8 is going to be equal to 2. 
So hopefully this video has shown you how to solve simultaneous equations. I mean, it's not very com it's not complicated at all. I think the, the hardest part is just setting it up so that you can solve for them simultaneously. I could give you an even harder example, and I could say something like, let's um, let's look at another example here. Let's have something like two x plus three y equals to eleven, and then let's have the second equation as y minus 2x equals to 1. So now in this case we notice, oh, hang on a minute, we don't actually have the equation in that nice form where we you could just simplify it and substitute into 1. But it turns out you, all you need to do is you need to decide, okay, so I just need to rearrange um, the one of these equations so that I get an expression for one of them in terms of the other and then substitute that into the other one. So let's call this one e equation 1 and let's call this one equation 2. So we can rearrange equation 2 if we add 2x to both sides, so that becomes 1 plus 2x. So that becomes the new e equation 2. And now we can substitute this value into equation 1, so that's going to be 2x plus 3 times 1 plus 2x, and that's going to be equal to 11. So now we expand this, so that's going to be 2x plus 3 plus 3 times 6x equals to 11. Now this is going to be 8x. Here we have 11, subtract 3 from both sides, this becomes 8, such that x is going to be equal to 1. And now if we substitute that value in here, we're going to have 1 plus 2 times 1, and that's equal to 3. So that would be the solution to that equation. So we can see that it's not really that difficult to solve these ones. So all you need to do is you just need to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, then substitute into the other equation, and then once you find the answer to one of them, you can find the solution to the other very, very simply by substituting in the values of those ones. And if you wanted to check that your answers are correct, all you would need to do is you would need to plug in those values into each of them, and both equations should be satisfied. So, in, for example, if we put 2 into the first one, so that's 2 times 1 plus 3 times 3. Is that equal to 11? Well, this is 2, this is 9. So, yes, that's indeed equal to 11. So, this value satisfied the first equation. Now, how about the second one? We're going to have 3 minus 2 times 1, which is just 2, equals to 1. And, yes, indeed, they satisfy that one. So that's how you check that your answer is actually correct.